Hello. So far we've considered general linear models in which a continuous response is assumed to be normally distributed around a given model. And furthermore, we assume that the variance uh, of our response around that model is the same for all levels of the predictor variables in that model. However, in some cases our response variable cannot be considered continuous but uh, takes a different form and one example might be that it takes a binary form in which the response can either be yes or no a one or a zero drunk or sober male or female diseased or healthy etc. How do we analyze data where we can't assume a normal distribution of our response? Well the key method for understanding and testing hypotheses relating to binary response variables is the so-called binary logistic regression. Here is an example of the use of a binary logistic regression. Here we have trees of different widths and uh, a statement in terms of whether these individual trees are infested with a parasite or not. Now eyeballing these data it seems that larger trees would not tend to be infested compared to smaller trees. How do we test hypotheses based on these sample data? Well, one approach is to simply apply a t-test or analysis of variance to look at the difference between infested and non-infested trees in terms of their tree widths. Does the tree width uh, differ significantly uh, between infested and non-infested trees? However, that form of analysis only takes you so far and in many cases when we apply methods to understand a response variable which is binary, we also want to understand under what conditions will it switch from one state to another. So for example, under what conditions will it uh, a tree uh, be much more likely to be not infested uh, than infested? Now the key method for understanding the conditions under which that switch might occur is the binary logistic regression. In binary logistic regressions what we do is we assume that the response variable we are measuring is the outcome of a probabilistic model whose parameters are the various predictor variables, in this case the tree width. So in effect what we are doing is really fitting some form of sigmoidal model to our data which is the probabilistic model that generates those data. What sort of line has these properties uh, that allows us to include some form of switch? Well clearly it has to be sigmoidal in form or S-shape in form and, and clearly it should be able to go both ways not just uh, from left to right here but also from right to left in this way. Well there are a variety of mathematical formula that will give us sigmoidal curves but the one here that is used in binary logistic because it rates so well to the original form of statistics that we've been looking at the general linear model is this form. Now it could look a little bit scary but I want to take you through it because it's really very simple. It's an exponential function where we have an exponent on the numerator and one plus the same exponent on that denominator. And here is the probability of being in one state or another. And here what we'll see is that we've got the coefficients which are really very similar to an intercept and here in this case uh, we have a gradient in front of the first predictor variable x1 and we can generalize it and have x2 uh, uh, all the way up to xk. So in effect this would look like a, a multiple regression type model but it's all formed in part of this exponent uh, relationship here. I should so note that binary logistic models will also allow us to include categorical predictors here just in the same way as we can introduce categorical predictors into general linear models. Now let's have a look at what really happens and remind ourselves what goes on in a, uh, a logistic uh, regression model fit.
here we have uh, a response variable this is uh, whether an individual is dead or alive and this is the concentration of the toxin to which it's been exposed it really does look like when we expose individuals to high concentrations of the toxin they're more more likely on average to be dead uh, than alive although here we have one or two observations here in which uh, they happen still to be alive what happens in the logistic regression model is that uh, we actually fit a probabilistic model to the data that is most likely to have generated these uh, individual uh, data points uh, here. So here we've got more likely to be dead at these concentrations and then there's a switch to more likely to be alive at those concentrations. So logistic regression tests for relationships between a binary response variable, yes or no, healthy or disease, etc., and predictors by estimating the coefficients of these simple equations here, these simple equations, the exponential uh, type models. Uh, and what's those equations doing? Well, the equation is simply telling us the probability of being in one outcome uh, or another. How does it work? Well, here is the uh, effective model that's fitted to our data and we can see that it's a rather difficult exponential form. There is a way to simplify it. The first step in simplification is to think about the probability uh, of it being in one state divided by the probability of it being in the other state. So that's our first step and that's called an odds ratio. The odds of yes versus the odds of no. If we take the log of that, it turns out that effectively we've manipulated this to form a simple linear equation. So by doing some mathematical trickery, we can turn this exponential model into a far simpler linear model based not on p, but log of p divided by uh, 1 minus p. So as I said, uh, that ratio is the odds ratio. And taking logs of an odds ratio to create a linear relationship is a transformation. It's called a logit transformation. So often you will see binary data associated with the term logit transformation. And what we're doing here is turning the relationship that would explain those outcomes in terms of the binary outcomes into a more linear relationship by doing this uh, mathematical transformation. Now, logistic regression is called a generalized linear model. It's not a general linear model, but it can be turned into the format in which we can analyze as if it were a general linear model by an appropriate transformation. And as I've said, it will work for both categorical and con continuous predictors in our model. So by some mathematical trickery, we've actually turned our model into a much more tractable form. So it is generalizable back into the classic general linear model by uh, applying these transformations. How do we uh, carry out a logistic regression? What, what actually happens? Well, the first is uh, it tests null hypotheses. Of course, we have sample data and we want to make inferences about the population as a whole. So what we do here is we test the hypotheses that the coefficients, and that can be the effective intercepts, that beta zero, or more interestingly and more importantly, any of those gradients like beta one, are different from zero at the population level. And what it uses is a Wald statistic, which is called a Z in R. Now, the Wald statistic is highly related to other well-known statistical distributions, in particular the T uh, distribution, and it's compared uh, with a chi-squared. And if the null hypothesis of those population level parameters being zero, uh, then that Wald statistic will follow a chi-squared with a certain uh, number of degrees of freedom. So that's the theory. Let's have a look at it in practice. And this is uh, data from Gary Polis, which was reported in a really nice book by Quinn and Keo uh, called Experimental Design and Data Analysis for Biologists. The data refer to the presence or absence of lizards 
on islands of different perimeter to area ratios. First of all I'm going to read that data in. I'll call it lizard data that I'm reading from a text file called polis data. And then I'm going to view the data and here we can see here's the perimeter area ratio of the islands and here's the presence or absence of lizards on those islands. Next I'm going to attach these data so that I can refer directly to the uh, variables within the data frame and of course the first step in any statistical analysis should be to visualize your data so here I'm plotting a graph of the perimeter to area ratio against the presence or absence of lizards. Eyeballing these data it really does appear that uh, islands with small perimeter to area ratios tend to have lizards and yet those with relatively large perimeter to area ratios do not tend to have lizards of this type. How do we conduct a binary logistic model? Well, because it's a generalized linear model, we call up the fun function GLM, and here we're relating the presence and absence of the lizards to the perimeter to area ratio of lizards on the island. Now, we've got a binary response. The generalized linear model allows us to deal with non-normal responses, but we have to tell it that we're dealing with a binomial response. So we'll say here, family equals binomial. Now, our knowing that the response variable is a binomial will automatically default to the log it link transformation, which turns this into more tractable form. Uh, but it doesn't help to actually, it doesn't do, do any harm to actually state explicitly uh, that we've got the log it link. Now, having fitted the model, we've got a summary of the model, and here are the key parameters. We've got estimates of the equation that has been fitted, the probabilistic model that's been fitted to explain those binary responses. And here are the two key tests of the null hypotheses. Here we can reject the null hypotheses that the gradient is zero because the probability of us obtaining that z value or more extreme if the null hypothesis is true is really very small. We can also reject the null hypothesis that the intercept is zero but that's of less interest because that simply describes the, the baseline probability of it being in this state or that state or of lizards being present or, or absent. So, we reject the null hypothesis that the parameters in the model equation have population means of zero. Now, it may be of interest to replot back onto those data uh, the overall probabilistic model that is thought to have been most likely to have generated those data. So, here what we use is uh, x phi, which is a counter uh, of our uh, values of x going from the smallest to the largest in very small steps. And uh, y v is the predicted value of the model for all those given values of x v. And we're saying here the type is the response in that it's not the linearized form in which we've got the uh, log it model. We're actually plotting it straight back onto the y values, uh, the observed yes or no responses. And uh, here we've got lines. We're simply drawing uh, up between all these uh, x and y values. And I'm detaching for good measure. But what do these graphics do? Well, it draws this graph here. This is the fitted model uh, to our data. Now, just to make sure that you understand exactly what's going on, uh, recall that these were the coefficients of the fitted model uh, here in terms of the intercept and the gradient. We can now look at the probability of the lizards being present uh, here uh, and how it's been described by this fitted model. Here we've got the intercept, uh, there's the estimate of 3.606 and here we have the gradient of that relationship between the perimeter to area ratio and the probability present, albeit uh, through this uh, more complicated uh, exponential function.